Hi, I'm Loretta Gillespie. I'm a master gardener with the Coleman Master Gardeners. My home is in Moulton, Alabama, and we're here to talk about succulents today. And this is not a succulent. <laughs> this lives happily with succulents, but people like my nose, what I call my nosy neighbors. And they live so happily with succulents, which are plants that don't require very much water. You almost have to try to kill them. So these will live happily, they're low light, low water. This is a succulent. This is a kalanchoe. And it will, this is a variegated kalanchoe. If you're used to seeing the ones in the box stores and at plant places that have the red, pink, blue blooms, the leaves are all green, this is a variegated one. And it'll turn real pink if it gets in the sun. And each leaf is a potential plant. And each leaf node will grow roots. And all you really have to do is just touch the soil with it. You don't have to plant it. You can just touch the soil. And in about a week or two, I'll come out here and there will be little sprouts, little red air roots. And you just poke them down in the ground and they'll grow a new plant. That's how this plant got here. And these propagate so easily that it's just amazing when you think about this it's kind of like grass and you can't almost you can't kill grass mm -hmm. so you just poke it down in another pot and and it'll grow roots and you don't have to worry about it in fact I always tell people when they're learning to grow succulents to plant them or sit them around on the patio or somewhere where you don't sit because you'll be tempted to water them. It'll be three days since you watered and you'll think, oh, that's about to burn up. It's not. This is where you can tell where, what is a good, let me get right there. This is a good way to always tell how, how you water something. Okay? See this leaf on this ivy, how thin it is? And it's almost like a fern. A fern would even be thinner, and that's why we have to water them almost every day. See this leaf, how thick? The difference is this leaf takes in water more by its roots. This leaf stores water. And you can tell that when you break it open because look how much moisture is in it. And you especially know that with an aloe plant. We're all familiar with aloe plants. And that's it's the same principle. It stores its own water. And by the way, this will grow another plant too. This is a jade plant. You've probably seen it before. This is an air root. When I say air roots, this is where this plant formed air roots when it got dry in the pot and it needed to send out a root. This is another succulent it's a, called a burrow's tail and you can see how thick those little nodes are all you have to do is take one of these and drop it on the soil and go away and forget it for about three weeks and you'll come back and that'll have rooted in that soil you don't even have to plant it now this is more a cactus type plant but cactus and succulents make great roommates there are air roots on this one too and the reason there are air roots on it is it was broken off. And I just happened to pick it up. But when it broke off, it didn't have any roots to take in any water. So it sent out this. And it'll collect some from the air. And just poke it back down in there and it'll make another plant. So we can move on to here. And I got one. I saved one to plant. I had found this little pot, and by the way, it makes a lot of difference what kind of pot you put your succulent in. You want a clay pot if you can possibly get one. I have them in all kinds of stuff. This is ceramic. That's ceramic. All these are ceramic. <clears throat> but terracotta or clay will work so much better. Now, you can take a leaf off of this, and you can stick it down, and that's how this whole pot got made, was just sticking ones that broke off also you're going to see on your succulents 
dead leaves on the bottom a lot. It's natural. That's why leaves are on your lawn. It's natural for plants to shed leaves. That doesn't mean it needed any water. It doesn't mean it's dead. It just meant that's how it sheds its leaves. So I'm going to take this one up and show you how easy it is just to grow another plant. I use miracle Grow cactus and succulent soil. And sometimes if I've got a plant that really doesn't like to be wet, I'll add some sand to it. And you can see some sand mixed in with this. And it's just builder sand. This is the soil I love to use. It's already pre-mixed with just about everything. But like I said, if I have one that I know is really particular about wet, what I call wet feet, then I'll stick some sand in, in it and that'll make it drain better. So this one looked a little fuller. And we might can see what the name of it is, but I'm not real good on all these names because there are about 225,000 of these. So you have to really be on your game if you know all of them. Somebody from the Birmingham Botanical Garden told me one time, just say something in Latin, they won't know. <laughs> But a lot of people watching this are probably master gardeners, and they probably will know. So this one looked a little bit fuller in this pot, and that's why I repotted it so you could see. But that's just as simple as it can be. You don't have to go through any great lengths. The one thing you have to remember is that it's got to have drainage holes. And I have a lot of people want to put them in glass because they see them in florist in the, in the glass or something. That won't work. It'll drown it every time. And the only way really to kill these things is to drown them. And they're, they're particular about that. And then, but when you do water them, you want to soak them because these are desert plants for the most part. And when it rains in the desert, it floods. So you want to soak them really well. And then I probably won't water this again for two weeks. And I have had them turn over somewhere and lay there for a month or two and I'd go back and get them and they'd look just fine. So if you want to, some, if you're somebody that can't remember to water your plant, this is the plant for you. And I have stuck, this is more Rapsalis and this is an Earth Star. And this is probably my favorite one. You see how that broke off when I touched it? That's a baby, it's called a pup. And that's another plant. But I hardly ever water this. I sit it up on this top shelf and it doesn't even get water when it rains because I know it would melt. Same thing with all of these. You can just grab this, stick it down in another pot, and go away and forget about it. Because these plants thrive on neglect. And you're going to knock them off like I just did that one all the time. Every time you clean them, every time you move them, you're going to knock leaves off. So when you do, you just take that leaf, stick it down in something else, go away and forget about it. Okay, let's see what we got over here. This is another Rapsalis, and this one's a little thicker, and you see how easy it breaks off? Same thing with, with the succulent. You just take it. That one got a little hard. That's a little woody, so I'll break that part off so it can get a good start. And just stick it down in some soil, and there you have another plant. This is another Earth Star. You can see the little pups on this one really well. See that one, and there's one that's coming up. Now these will grow on the ground. I'll tell you when we come across one that'll grow outside all year, but this one won't. You'll have to take it in. I have a cousin that I gave one of these plants to, and she couldn't grow anything, she said. So I told her just water it on major holidays. And that's what she does, and I'll, I'll call her and I'll remind her, it's, it's uh, the 4th of July, it's time to water your plants. So, and she does, and it's been living that way for a couple of years. This is a cactus. 
It probably needs a little more life than what I'm giving it right here. It'd probably be bigger. <clears throat> but I put it right there because I don't want to water it much. So I put it right there and it, it doesn't get any water from the overhang even when it rains. There's another jade. This is a pot full of earth stars. And they have different coloration. And the pink, of course, is my favorite. But this one's almost red. Wine color. And these stay this color. It's got a little pink in it, but most, mostly green. And they multiply just like the others did. They put out off cut. And this is a good plant to share because you just, that's all you have to do to get a new plant. Just pull it out of the dirt. Stick it back in something else. And that's a good thing to know, too. When you start growing these, you're going to have a lot of plants to pass along, or you're going to have a lot of plants. So you have to kind of collect pots. This is a Christmas cactus. I guess a lot of you will recognize this. It has an air root too. See that little tiny root? And I'll stick it down when one breaks off and it'll root. Christmas cactus actually come from the Amazon forest floor. So they don't need as much light as probably some of the other stuff. And that's why it has to be so dark sometimes for them to bloom. They have to get enough dark because they're down under that canopy. So you could just take this and it grows really well with a cactus. And it grows really well with succulents. And it adds some color sometimes. Succulents do bloom. The bloom is kind of in insignificant. But here's one that's blooming now. And you can see what a pretty bloom it has. But it's not really a big bloom, and it's not anything you grow these plants for. You grow them more for the foliage. But that's a good little bloom right there, and they last just, oh, it seems like they last forever. There's an air root on a piece that broke off. Can you see that little root? And that will sustain that plant until those roots turn around and reach something they can grasp onto, and then it'll start rooting. There's another one. And that's how easy these plants are to grow. So when you have friends that say they can't grow anything and they kill stuff from Hobby Lobby, they can probably still grow these unless they really are judicious with that water hose because they, these plants almost, they suck up water when it rains or when, it, when you water them. And, and that's all they need. I do fertilize them. This is what I use. And it's easy. It's prepackaged. And all you have to do is just squirt a little squirt into the plant when you water it. Now, here's there's an exception to every rule. If you've used fertilizer in anything, you might want to water it a little extra the next couple of weeks because the fertilizer will burn it. But this, I haven't had this burn anything. But I do water them a little bit extra when I've used fertilizer. I also use fish emulsion. I have taken them back in. Because they'll melt. Some of this is melted. In fact, see where these came from? Can you see that plant down in there? There was another plant down in there. And it when we had all that rain, this was out here, and it actually melted. But I left it in there, and can you see it coming back? One little tiny little piece of green there. So they will, if you'll be patient with them and you don't have to show them off or something, they'll probably come back if you just leave them alone. But most people see the dead part, and they just throw it away. If you have a little nursery for them where you can take that plant and just let it rejuvenate, then it will, it will come back and make you another plant as long as it gets dry for a while. Here's a little offshoot crawling out of here. This was a little bitty dish garden. And you'll see them and they'll look so good and they'll be real high. And you don't know why in the world are these plants so high. There's, they're, if you think about how many plants you're getting when you buy one of these, <clears throat> every leaf is a potential plant. 
Every leaf here is a potential plant. That's probably four, five, six hundred plants when you think about it. And that's one reason they're so high. And another reason they're high is because it kind of takes them a long time to grow. So if you get one this big, somebody's been growing it somewhere in the nursery for two years. So that's, that's another reason they're high. This is a good rule of thumb, and there are exceptions to every rule, like I said. <clears throat> if a plant turns ye yellow from the bottom, it's probably being overwatered. If it turns yellow from the top, it probably hadn't had enough water. You'll probably you'll never see that with these. But this one had had too much water from rain and from me. And it probably won't grow another one because this is kind of mushy. And it's it what it did was literally drown. So you just pull it off and get rid of those. But you can save every other leaf that falls off this thing. So here's like one plant for everybody in your graduating class. Um, let's see another one. That's a rat salad. It's the same thing as that hairy thing over there. And there's some in here with it. But it, they're just kind of like kissing cousins. And these do bloom. The first time I went out in the greenhouse and these had bloomed, I was just in shock. It has a little bloom like a um, lily of the valley. Little bitty tiny white bloom. But that's not what those are. And it, see it mixes well. Here's another succulent. And here's another thing. A lot of succulents do this. And they'll get this long, ugly, snaky looking limb. And I really don't like how that looks. I like for them to look real cool. So I'll break them off when they get long like that. And we'll use these to make a pot of something for Rachel for the Master Gardener. So I'm going to put it right there and we'll just remember that. One thing you can do, do you know how geraniums need to harden off when you break them before you start them again? It doesn't hurt these to harden off a little bit before you plant them. Most of the time, I'll just do this like I'm shelling peas. And I'll just take every one of those off and I'll just put them in a pot and they'll grow roots like those little roots we just looked at. But these are really easy to root too, and we'll get some of these for that giveaway pot. These look real full now, but it takes them a while to get like this. It, this has probably been growing in here for three years without a lot of pruning. And we're gonna put, I'm gonna make my little pile right here for that. Um, and we'll put that in too. So, do we want to go, where do you see something you want to know? Oh, okay. Here's a burrow's tail that's gotten really long. And it, the reason it has is because I can keep it away from my granddaughter, who likes to do that shell in the pea thing. So, sometimes I used to come out and find them all over the porch. Well, I'd just sweep them up and throw them in a pot. But this one's gotten really long, and they'll get longer. They'll get really long. And that is some type of jade, but I'm not familiar with it. But it's grown really good up there because I hardly ever water it. And it's got some rapsalis in it. It's got another little, I believe that's some form of kalanchoe, but I'm not sure. It's growing up tall. This is mother of millions. I do know what this is. And you have to work to give it away because it, it's so productive. <laughs> So we'll break off some right there. This is a ghost plant. I like this. It's, it's got a lot of um, personality to it because it's such a lighter color that it shows up against all the green. Most succulents are green, but if you will give them enough sun and stress them out, meaning let them get root bound and let them get dry, They'll color up more. Not these. This is that Kalanchoe again. The variegated. And that one is really white. But I've got some more later on we'll see that are pink. This is a colander and there's nothing in it but moss. And these have been in it for probably three years. So that just tells you. You know, see that's an air root. Look. That's because it hadn't got roots 
very much in there. It does have some roots in that moss, but it doesn't depend on the soil for the water. It depends on the air, some moisture in the air. But to see, those are long, sturdy roots. Now, if I were going to break this plant to propagate it, I'd break it where that root is and bury it. But it will, just like anything else, root from one leaf. And their succulents are almost, I mean, there are some that won't, and the cactus will sometimes, and sometimes it won't. But almost any of these will root if you just lay them on some soil. You don't have to actually pot them up. This mother of millions, we'll see some more there. See, it's putting off more plants right here. And that's where you get that millions thing. Every one of those little divots will grow a plant. There's one. Look. See all those little plants? That'll make more of these. And sometimes you'll go out and the whole plant will be covered with these. And if you put them where they can drop on the soil, they'll root pretty easy. But they won't live through the winter. So I'm going to take these and we'll go down to the greenhouse and find what we can find there. Okay. This is something also that will live well with succulents. And this is a bromeliad and they grow in nature in the crotch of a tree. And they'll grow pretty well with, bro, uh, with succulents that don't mind being a little bit more damp because that has, as long as, this doesn't have to have a lot of water at the root, but it likes water in that cup. And all of them form a little cup. And there's some more down here. Let's see what's up here. That's more of the same stuff. Watch this hose, Rachel. You see it? Okay, this is um, sedum, and it's in the succulent family, and it will grow outside all year long. Now, it's going to look really ragged in the spring, but it's not, cold weather won't kill it. This has been in this broken pot, and by the way, I recycle my pots. I try to use them all. This one was broken, and that one was broken, and I didn't want to throw them away. So I just tilted it up, and this has been growing in here for, I know, three winters at least. This is the cow and that I was telling you about, and this one's already gotten some pink. See that little pink on it? There's a, there again, there's some air roots. That stays right. There's some pink on that one. And here's half a leaf, so we're going to take it and put it in our pot. Okay, step right there. Now this is something that won't grow all winter, but you have enough of it that you can just save it in a pot, and all you have to do is throw it at the dirt and walk <laughs> off. But this little succulent lives through it, although this takes a little more water than I usually give a succulent. And this is a good one. Yes, it's a good one. And it stays right out here in the sun. And that's what gives it this little extra color. It's the sun. And this is a good pink one. I just love pink ones. So I try to keep as many as I can. But this one's real sensitive to water. So I have to be careful not to let it get too much. Here's another mother of millions. And you can see the little baby's coming. And it grew this arm way out here. And then it turned up. Instead of drooping down, it turned up. So I mixed it with some more little ones of those. And that pot will fill in. And here's an oak tree that thinks it's a second. This is called blue chalk sticks. And I've got some more in there. And it's just like anything else. Any of the rest of these. These will grow another plant. Remember I told you everything's a potential plant, every leaf. These get long and leggy. That's the only bad thing about them. So I'll usually break it off where it's got the ugly stem. Break it off more. It'll form a plant there. This will form a plant. And this long part will form a plant. And every one that falls off will form a plant. And that's how you propagate those. But see? 
Remember I showed you the moisture content? That's almost as thick as a thin pencil. And all that's water. See here? See all that? That's just moisture. I guess that's how all those people in movies survive in the desert. They get all these cactus. But now some of them are poisonous. Somebody going to the hospital. Okay. This is a root from my mother's crab apple tree. And when the tree died and it blew over, there were a lot of roots like this sticking around. So I just put moss in them and put some of this stuff that'll grow outside all year, like this sedum, and stuck them around in here. And they stay outside. And that's what they've grown. And it has looked better than that. It's, that's gotten a little shabby because we had so much water, so much rain this spring. Now this is uh, another plant all together that I stuck in there for some color. But this is a good, I don't know if this is a cactus. I guess it is. It's got bad stickers on the ends. But in the fall, it turns the prettiest orange color. And it really, really doesn't like to be wet. So I hardly ever water it. So it's covered. Mm-hmm, it's covered. And all this will be orange, almost just like fire, in the fall. Here's another good way to fertilize, especially if you're really lazy. These are spikes, and you just put one of these little spikes into a pot about like this. If you got a bigger pot, you just use another spike. These are Lowe's Markdowns, look. They were almost $12, I think, regular price. And if you'll kind of shop Lowe's when they're feeling inclined to put stuff in the nursery bed, they were $9.98. They were marked down to $5. And this one has a beautiful bloom. So, the reason I showed you that it's because a lot of times we want these things to look flat. And they want to grow up like this. And when they grow up, this was a pretty little dish garden. All this was real flat and compact. And you couldn't see any soil. So we're going to repot this. But the one thing I found is, when you plot this, it's different from potting anything else. Because when you put a little pressure on this, the leaves will fall off. So what I decided was that if I found something that was deep enough, I could just pop it right in there, push that soil down just a little, and it would still be flat. And that's about as hard as it gets to repot one of these. Now, this will start doing the same thing this has done in a few weeks, not weeks, maybe another month or two. It'll start getting leggy. So what we do is, just break it right there. This will grow another plant, and any leaf that falls off while I'm doing this will grow another plant. You can see where I've done this before. That was a stem where I broke off the head, and here's the little plant that start, starts from it. This is a little fuzzy plant that's Probably not too tall, but this one's way too tall because it only has these little balls on top. So what we do, break it off. Well, that one won't break. Do I have, I know where they are. You don't have to use clippers much with these, but that one's going to want them. So we just take these clippers, flip this off. This one's okay. It looks pretty good. So I'm going to leave it. This one needs clipping. You see all those air roots on that one? See all those little roots? So we can make two out of this and put those in our giveaway pot. And the stem where I cut it will grow another one. So I'm going to take this one. And I don't know what these are, but I call them pom-poms. Because they just have little stuff at the top. So I can push that down in there. 
me get around here where you can see. Just push that stem down in there. And get contact with the soil. And you'll have more little pom-poms. And this will turn into another really good, compact, succulent garden once we get it all. Now this, I have had these to do grow more. So if I just wanted to be really thrifty, I'd stick that in some soil and it would probably grow some more. Now I've got all my stuff down in the bottom. This is a little too tall, so I'm gonna clip it right here and it's gonna grow another plant right there and it's gonna grow another plant right there. So we'll get it back down low. And of course, when you mash that, it's falling all over the place, but you're not killing anything because it's gonna make another plant. We're gonna use this in our giveaway pot and it'll grow another one. See how leggy that is? That's what I'm saying when I'm telling you that these are uh, economical, even if you see one that has I think this one's like $25. So even if you see a $25 when you have to think, that's not just for that plant. That's for the 100 plants I'm going to get off of it in its lifetime. How long did it take it to get leggy? Two years. Two years to get to this point. There's another one that was on the bottom of that first one I clipped that's overwatered. That's how it's going to look when it's overwatered. Okay, these are the size plants that you need to start one of these. If you want to start one, this is what we'll do. You be sure to put something in the bottom of your pot, like a pot shard. These are really good and they make your plant lightweight, but I don't seem to be seeing too many packing peanuts anymore. There's a hole in that one too? Mm-hmm, always a hole. Never believe it when you see these things planted in glass unless you never ever water it because that water has nowhere to go. So we're just going to take this pre-mixed potting soil. You can usually find this at any discount store or plant place. And you won't want to fill it up all the way because you're going to knock some out with what you're putting in there. So you find these at discount stores and they're usually about three dollars which seems high for a little bitty pot like that when you can get a rose bush for five or six dollars it's this big so you're still counting this has got four plants in it now it'll make 50. I like this color this is a jade but I like that color on it so I bought it anyway, even though I had, and that's about how easy it is to get them out because they hadn't been in here long and they're not rooted well. So we'll put, we're going to find the tallest one, which will be this one. And I, you can save that soil that came out of it because that's probably bonnie plants or somebody that really puts in good soil. You find your tallest one. And you center it. And then you put your shorter ones down around the edges. Just like you would with any flower arrangement. This I know is going to get big. It's going to get taller because it's a jade. So we're going to put it in the center. Even though it's not really tall enough right now to show up well. And I can take this and make three out of it. But because I want this to look real full. I'm going to leave it just like it is. I love this one and I love the variation in color since so much of this other is just green. And I will tell you that if these don't get enough sun, these will revert and they'll be greener again. So if you like this color, this kind of rose color, you're going to have to give it plenty of sun. This is the same thing. And if you want, also the color has to do with stressing it. And by stressing it, I mean don't water it too much and let it get pot bound. These like to be pot bound. You can see what that one was doing. It was still living well. 
This one's going to add a lot of color to this. But it's got too much soil on it. So I'm just going to save that for something else. And that's where the roots really, that's how much roots it really had. I'm going to scoop these over and plop that down right in the center. And some will fall off, just like these did, because I'm putting pressure on it. So we're going to put those in our other pot. And we're going to take that and just really mash thick. it down. Mm -hmm. So just like that, you've got another dish garden. Oh. And you can take these, every one that falls off. That one already has some roots. Can you see them? See the little root? I'm trying to yeah, hold it up against them. something. Okay. That one already has some roots, so you can put it right on the edge, and you'll have another plant. So where would the ideal location be for this? The ideal location would be if you were in the summertime, would be on a porch or patio that is covered and doesn't get rain, and gets about at least four hours of direct sun. So if you have a patio or porch that you can put this up on the edge of, and it's not going to get any rain overhead, and you're going to water it about every major holiday. <laughs> and so if you see it getting soggy, you're watering it too much, go away. Can you keep succulents indoors? Yes. You can keep them indoors, and they're good indoor plants, but you do have to give them enough light. And they can take a good bit of cold. When you just think about, you've seen all these movies where people get cold in the desert at night. It gets really hot in the daytime and they freeze at night. These can take a lot of, a lot more cold than what some of your other, like ferns and things like that. Let's see what this one says it'll take. This was this one. And it's called a lilac mist. Sansevera. And it says it's drought tolerant when established. So that means we need to water this because we've just planted it. And I had let them dry out before this. Making sure the soil is drained. Water thor and thoroughly and don't water it again until the soil is completely dry to the touch. It says protect from frost to prevent possible scarring. But it looks like it would live outside as long as you don't get frost. So if you're in Florida, you can have a whole yard full of these. <laughs> and it says, looks best with regular watering in hotter months. So that's if it's outside. If it's inside and it's getting air conditioning, like if it's in your office on your desk, that doesn't mean just because it's summer it needs more water in that condition. But these are good office plants, and they respond well to, to bright overhead light. But I've found that putting them in direct sun will bleach them out. They get sunburned just like we do, especially in the beginning of the year. So be real careful to protect them from the sun if you take them from inside out. In May, or don't put them out in April, no matter how warm it is, because they're going to get too much rain. And it's going to be too soggy. Here's one that broke off. So we'll put that in our other pot. This one has been outside until yesterday. And that's why it's getting some dead leaves on the bottom. But it would be another candidate. Let me get around here. It would be another candidate for one of these tall plants. And that looks better from this side. So this is kind of your nursery? In the... In the winter? Oh, yes. And when they get too soggy? Them? When, if they, they, I keep everything that's a succulent or a cactus or an air plant on this side. This gets good morning sun. There's a big aloe. Here's another. This is a neat one, and I was going to cut it off. Some of these plants don't look good when they put an offspring off. Like this one just looked better before this thing came up. And see, it's neater and it just looks better. It's starting to lean toward one side. So you can kind of turn it if you're close to a window so that it won't grow that way. See, there's one that's been on it for a long time. 
These are little candle jars. And all you have to do is get a handy husband like mine and drill the hole in them. And all, this, this was a candle jar too. So you can make a lot, of, you can find a lot of places to pot this with. We're going to put this in our oven. Here's one that I've been saving for this. So this is obviously too big to put this back in, the one that we were revamping. But I needed something long to put this stem in. And that stem doesn't have to be that long. So I cut it right here, and there's another plant. That leaf is yellow, so I'm going to take it off and put it in somewhere where it can grow another one. So that I can get this to fit down into the bottom. You have to be real careful not putting pressure on these leaves because they'll drop. And just get it as flat as you want it. And because this one's so tall, I'm using some rocks to prop it up until it gets comfortable in here. But it'll get leggy again. And when it does, I'll just take it out and put it in something like this. So here are more plants. Where do you find your Everywhere. <laughs> this one I ordered from somewhere, and it got here broken. So I called them and told them, and they said, well, they didn't have any more. So I just glued her back together, and she's had brain surgery. <laughs> But she just got planted, so she's not showing. This one, a lady at craft fairs has. And I know Bell Buckle, she was at Bell Buckle when my friend who was there got this for me. So these were like, this one's like $35, but there's, some of them are really ridiculous. This is like a pencil cactus. Let's see what it calls itself. Euphorbia fire sticks. This did not have this chartreuse green color when I got it because it had been outside and it had fiery red where it's chartreuse colored down they were fiery red but I brought it in here to let it get a little comfortable when I repotted it and this has that poisonous sap you want to be real careful everybody's not allergic to it I'm not but some people are really allergic to this plant sap this is a little thing that these fuzzier leaves if you've ever grown African violets and you know how hard they are, I mean, they're just not the easiest plants. Some, some people can grow them really well. But these are just kind of fuzzy and they really don't respond well to water. So I, two, I lost two of them. But, can you see, I just left that there. Can you see where that one's coming back? So I just leave them alone. If I'm not showing them off sometime, I just leave them alone and it'll come back and make another one. So if you lose one like that, if you go and you look at it and it's just melted, just put it somewhere where nobody can see it and give it a chance and it'll probably regrow. Okay, let's see what this is. This is something that I kind of put back to the back because these all these air roots are not real pretty. But there's one right there that just popped off. We can put that in our pot. But you can break this one anywhere. And it'll grow even though it's got a kind of more a woody stem than most succulents do. But it's had enough water you can tell. It shouldn't have put on all these. It's just an old plant. So I kind of use it as a mother plant when I plant other stuff. But here's an impatient in here that's not wilted. So it's been getting a good bit of water. There's an asparagus fern that rooted from a seed that a bird brought in that. This is another cactus. I hardly ever water this thing. It might get watered four times during the summer. And that's because this is really thick. You see how thick that is? And it's holding water all the time. But here, you see how it's propagating itself? All on its own. There's another Kalanchoe that has all that little babies in the, uh, let's see. I, this is an oxalis that's planted in with this jade plant. And when it starts wilting, I will water this. But the jade plant holds water really well. It's probably 10 years old. 
And see, it's repotting itself. Here's Jack's. Here's Smilex and the, the birds dropped. And we get birds in here all the time. This is sage. That's not a succulent, but I'll just mention. Okay, you see how thick this one is? This is a cactus. But it's so thick. And this is a century plant. And it really does bloom once a century. So when it blooms, then it dies. But it puts off a lot of pups over those years. So you can start another one. I have a friend who's got one probably almost as big as a Volkswagen. I don't know how they move it. Here's another bloom on a succulent that you can see why you really don't. I mean, it's that looks really pretty, but it's not a big bloom like on a rose or hibiscus or something. But they'll put off. There's another leaf falling. And they do. You can't transport these. You can't carry these plants around. If you want to enter something in the county fair, it's not one of these. Because <laughs> it'll be empty by the time you get it there. It's a lot of t This is orchid moss. There's another one. And a lot of times I'll mix some of this up in something if it's in some of this cactus soil. Ready. This brick chimney faces west. It gets really hot from midday on to the sun sets. And I have killed more plants there, even though I watered them much more than I usually would water a succulent. And they'd all have died. But look at the mother of millions. So if you have a really hot place and you want to put a plant there, try the mother of millions because it's thriving there. Also, when you get down this low, see there's a creeping genie. I have to water that a lot. But it's because it's so low to the ground and this concrete gets so hot that it's just like you could probably fry an egg on it some days. So I have to be really careful and water these. So that's another consideration when you're growing succulents or anything that you might tend to overwater. If you've got it on, suck, on concrete, you're going to have to water it more in the really hot part of the summer. So I have to be careful with this because this does. This is a succulent. And I saved this because I knew you were coming. And it's called Cedium. That's a philium major. And it is tiny, tiny. You can just see that. It's just tiny, tiny. And it grows almost like the burrow's tail. But it'll eventually crawl out. This is the burrow's tail up here? Let's see. This one is what this is. And it says, Evergreen in milder climate, low carpet of tiny rounded powdery blue gray leaves and white star flowers in early autumn. Light foot traffic, so you could actually plant this on the ground and let's see if it'll tell the temp. This is about the best way to learn all these sedums is to get one of those little pouches that you put coupons in and file these little cards and write, a, write yourself a little note where you put the plant. And then you won't forget. So this says full sun. It'll get two to four inches tall and eight to 12 inches wide. It blooms in early summer and the hardiness zone is five to nine to minus 20 degrees. So this is a good one for outside. And you can put it on the ground if you don't want to put it in a pot. This is a cousin, I'm sure, to that. And this is the burrow's tail. And these will get thin and leggy. If, if you, This is an old plant. It's probably 15, 16 years old. So what I did when my granddaughter shelled these for me is I swept them all up and put them up there and put more soil on top of them. And they've come out full again at the top. But I have some around there we'll look at in a minute that are not, and you can see the difference. But we'll put this in that too. Um, let's see. Here's the pink calico. See there how pretty? I just love that foliage. And this is easy to propagate too, just with a leaf. And this is what I want to show you right here. Don't get all this ugly bottom. 
This has been growing in this pot with a rose for about five years. So it gets all the cold that it can bear. And, and water a good bit because I water the rose a lot. But we'll get some of this. And it's one of my favorite plants. Because it, in, in it being a succulent, you don't have to do much to it. It's got that color on it. There's another one in that pot that used to have a rose. And the rose died in the succulent leaf. Go figure. <laughs> but see how it's come all the way around the pot? Look at that. And it's just made like a lace edging around that pot. So it's really tough, and it looks really good in a hanging basket or a, an urn or anything where it can drape like that. Okay. Now don't tell Tony this, but this is my pork. It's for a tomato plant. I can't grow veg. Okay, watch this hose. Now these are where I put stuff that I really don't want to water. That's a Sedona plant or something. And it doesn't like a lot of water. This is those um, blue chalk sticks that we talked about. That's a succulent. And it really doesn't, I, I hardly ever water this little place. And that's why I put these here. And the reason what I first started moving them here is these Hens and chicks, because I melt them even though I know not to water them. So I put them over here and they get the heat from the concrete and they get the afternoon sun in this way. And I don't water them very much. Here's some more hose, Rachel. Now this is something we can break up till the cows come home. This was over there in all the roses and stuff, and it got way too much water. So I moved it over here by itself, and it's looking a little better. But these will grow upright more than some of the others. And I have some in some hanging baskets out with not even close to where the water hose will reach. See hanging on the bottom of that birdhouse? And they grow fine out there in moss baskets. But this one got, got too over water. But when it was stressed out there, it was putting off and putting off and putting off little babies trying to survive. So and there's the bloom. That's all the same plant? This is, but this is not. Yeah, this is some of the, the rosette form. I'll get one of those for the... And that, that'll be how it'll bloom. Okay, this is that pancake plant I was telling you about that's real sensitive and it's probably gotten too much water but I have one over there that's covered and I'll show you the difference and there's another earth star and that's that I think they call that a kangaroo plant this fuzzy one but this one looks really good out here because it's getting enough sun that it's colored up like that and that's why that has so much color and that's why this is blue and that's blue because it'd turn back green if it wasn't getting enough color. Mm -hmm. That's planted in moss. That's one of those kitchen colander things up under the. And it's got a ghost plant in it and some hen and chicks and some burrow's tail. And that ghost plant's blooming. This is the one, and people are going to see these a lot. Let me move this. Watch your step. I'm getting so old. Okay, come right here. This is the flapjack plant that we just looked. Are you ready? Yeah. This is the flapjack plant that we just looked out there. Only this one's under the covered porch, so it doesn't get quite as much sun as that one. But it doesn't get watered very much at all. And look how much healthier and, and good and how much it's putting out. And this is what you can do with your little <laughs> shoes that you don't want anymore. And these are my oldest friend's shoes. 
and she gave them to me for an experiment so we're growing burrs <laughs> tail in them and they should come out and come all the way over these shoes before very long and here is some burrs tail that we're going to get to take and put this is a broken pot. This is what you can do with your broken oh. pots. Turn them upside down, plant stuff in them. I never throw away a broken pot because I don't use it for shards in the bottom. I'll use it for something like this and just cover that up. This, this is where my granddaughter got hold of these. <laughs> and she has had a field day but all of them were full at the bottom like this until she got a hold of them and they were blooming, those little blooms. But when they get like this, with this long stalk, I just break it off up here and it'll, it'll regrow. And I take those and that's when I shell them. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they'll spring out like that sometimes. Look at this one. See, it looks really good on the bottom. But they got sparse on the top. So the other day when she had her big time out here. I just got the broom and the dustpan and, and got them up and you can't see, but see how they're starting again. So they'll be full in the top like that other one out there. And this had, this had gotten really sparse on top, but it's growing back in now. So when you see a plant like this, especially a succulent, that's getting sparse on top, give it a little more soil Put the stuff down on top of it and go away and forget it. And see, so this is one that's grown up, and I'll probably put it in something else. This is an air plant. Have you had air plants? Yes. That's a little air plant, and it gets plenty of air out here. <laughs> <laughs> Not much water, but plenty of air. This is a rock I found that I got to plant something in that had already had this little oh, natural bowl. So I look for stuff to plant succulents in all the time. I got this out of a crepe myrtle tree in Florida. Oh, yeah. And it's just a little plant. air plant. Mm -hmm. And they're real kin to succulents in that they'll grow for a long time when they water. Do you water them? I do water them sometimes, but I don't let them sit in water. That's why right, I yeah. tilted that cup to make sure. And see my chipped cups? I use them all. or pot shards, or anything like packing peanuts. You can recycle styrofoam cups. This had waffle cones in it. So I just tear it up in kind of big chunks because you want the water to be able to drain out from around it. That may be a little too big. But just tear it up in there. And styrofoam coffee cups, I mean, how many do you throw away? I mean, it's just forever. So if you have like your master gardener class, from one month to the next meeting, save all their used styrofoam cups, you can repot the world. But that's about how I do that. And then turn them upside down like this so they can get some stuff under them. And that'll keep your soil from washing away in your hole. Okay, here we are with our good miracle Grow soil. And we're just going to dump this over in here. And you can always add more, and I tend to usually get a little too much. Okay. Spread it out. Get good and even. And then just start, like we did before, start with your tallest plant. That already had a good root on it. It's kind of wobbly because it's so tall. Can you tell what they are as you put them in? That's an aloe. This is a succulent. <laughs> <laughs> this is that root that we cut. And I'm going to hide it, but it'll come out. It'll make a baby. This is the leaf. So we're kind of hide it too. This is the leaf off of this, which is a variety of hens and chicks. And what we can do with this, because it's broken like this, 
we can turn it into and we can put this one down in the soil and we can just lay this one here I love the color of that this is one of the sedums that fell off this is the blue chalk sticks and it's bent over so I don't want it to be bent over and I'm gonna break it again and I'm gonna put that little one right there so I'm gonna show you another trick that'll make them stand up later but all these little chalk sticks you can just put them around in there everything that fell off some of these have roots already growing on them if you have like um, some kind of an ornament or I don't know a big rock or anything you can put it in here and it'll just add to the mood I've got little rocks I don't see any big rocks this is the mother of millions and I'm going to tell you before we put it in here you can probably take it out when you get home because it will outgrow and overgrow everything in here but for right now it's being hay so we'll stick it in there this is the one that I told you could shell like these these usually don't do very good so there's the end of it we'll put it right along the edge we're going to send those with Rachel so she can give them out here's a little earth star we'll put it right there here's a burrow's tail we're gonna shell it but here's the here's another tip of one we can use these tips and if they're bent like that just make sure you get all that down in the soil see here's another tip we're gonna use that tip we're gonna send that with Rachel now this one looks pretty good so I'm just gonna shell the bottom so we'll take about that much of the stem just stick it right in there and we've already got a more established looking pot this is the one that grows so good upright now as it gets longer it will tend to flip over that's one of those little rosette growing plants so let's get it around here and I as I told you this is perfectly normal for these to lose leaves when they get dry like this just throw them off they won't grow anything but don't think it that you've done something to your plant or that you need to water it <laughs> because that's not what it is it, that's just a natural shedding of leaves this is the Christmas cactus we're gonna put it kind of in the middle this is that blue one that looks so good outside we'll put it we can actually kind of lay it so it'll lay over here's another little rosette that's almost white we'll put it right there so we'll know where it is and not cover it up because I'm going to show you something to cover this up there's a little top off of one of these we'll put it over on this side so it'll be kind of uniform this is that one that I told you was growing in with the roses and I'm going to take some leaves off of it and I'm going to break it off right there and you can see where there's a little leaf coming you know that's a node and you can just put it there and it'll grow over too. Now this is what I was going to show you. There's another one of those. Let me put it there. This is called chicken grit. And my good friend Holly Harshburner told me about this. And it's what a lot of um, a lot of the people who are retailers will put this on their plants so that they can not have all that soil showing and this is you could get this at tractor supply or maybe at your local co-op but it's poultry grit and it looks so pretty when you put this in it now i'm not going to put a lot in this because we're wanting these to propagate but if i was wanting to cover it up like if i was going to give it to just take it to the hospital or something i would fill it full and hide all the soil but that's a really good way to prop them up if they want to lean over the way that's doing. You can just stand him back up. See how he's losing leaves? Just stand him back up and get him like this because we're trying to get Rachel home with this. But it, they'll still propagate with this. 
but they're just not going to have access to as much soil. But they'll still propagate from the roots and they'll still put out the air roots. So if you take some away or if you're doing it just to propagate and not to look pretty, you might not want to use that. But I really like the way it looks. And for these purposes, we're using it to, print, to properly plant it. Now if you take this home, when would you water it? What would be your I'm going to water it when I get it home this time because it doesn't have any water in it at all. And these don't, a lot of them don't have any roots. So they're, they'll be more susceptible to start forming air roots, which are not real pretty, you know, when you think of it. But you can still drop these on top of those, and they'll still root, too. Um, this is some of the little leaves off the one that was growing in the rose bush. And you can just put those on there, and you're going to see their little leaves form. And when you see the little roots start coming up, the little pink roots, just poke your finger down, poke it down in the soil. Same with all of it. See this little earth star? It had a little bit of roots, but you remember it fell off real easy when I touched it. That's the little root that it had. So it's got a little bit of a root, and you can just push it down real easy. But some of them, when you start putting pressure on them, you just have to be real careful. That doesn't want to stand up. You can take a piece of thread, a piece of dental floss so it won't show or whatever, and tie it up just a little, and then cut it off later so it won't cut the circulation off. But that'll give you a good start right there. Let me put one more in it. That's going to be too tall. So I'm going to break this off shorter because I'm trying to get something to prop. Now. And that one's just too tall. It doesn't want to stand up, so I'm going to cheat right there. <laughs> this one, I'm just going to lay over in here and you can, you can take it when you get it where it's going and put it back out. But I'm gonna lay it over in there. And I would water this when I got home and let's see what this is, almost Memorial Day. So let's call it, you're gonna water it on Memorial Day and you're not gonna water it again until, what's next, Thanksgiving. And it really will be all right. Unless it's in the hot sun on concrete. And you're not gonna do that anyway. If you're doing this in a house, you wanna put it in a west, or south facing window, not right up against the glass because it will burn. And you want to turn it a quarter of a turn when you see it leaning toward the window. Just turn a quarter of a turn each time and it'll come out even. But they will try to grow toward the sun just like anything else. But this is a good, uh, a good thing to pot these in this to top these pots off with this poultry grit because they can come up through it. It's just kind of fine and they can come up through it. And then I might in two weeks after they've hardened off and they've kind of adjusted, I might get some of that pump. Here it is. This is what I fertilize with besides the sticks. It's cactus and succulent. This is Organic succulent and plant food, and you can get it at any place that sells succulents most of the time. And you just put it, just put a little bit in there, and then water. I don't, but now it says to. So I, I just know that I'm going to water. I'm going to flood it with water, and I'm going to flood it when I do that, so that it's dripping and coming over. And that way, it won't get any place. If I start mixing it up in a gallon, I've got to carry a gallon of water somewhere. And it's hard on these old knees. Let's see. Let's see what else we got over here. We'll put that for you. Okay. This head, this, I don't have any more Mother of Millions. I mean, not Mother of Millions, but Earth Stars in here. But when we get out, we'll put a couple of more Earth Stars on it. And this is yours. 